This is our second video involving a uh, optimization problem, uh, a maximum minimum problem, where we have a uh, constraint condition involved. Here we have a rectangle inscribed um, inside of a circle. We're just considering the front part of the circle, or the really the uh, semicircle. And we want to know what dimensions should the rectangle have so it, it takes up the maximum amount of area. So the equation for the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 25. And of course, the equation for the area of our rectangle is the base, which is 2x times the height which is y. And then from our, as you saw in the previous video, from our constraint equation, we can express the area in terms of just one variable. Here we see that y is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared. So the area equals 2x times the square root of 25 minus x squared. Now we can take the derivative of the area with respect to x to determine the critical points. By determining what this is and setting it equal to 0. So we will have this times the derivative of 2x with respect to x. So that's just 2. That's just this times the derivative of this, plus we have 2x, this, times the derivative of the square root of 25 minus x squared. And let's write this in exponent form. 25 minus x squared to the 1 half power. Now we take the derivative, we have 1 half, bringing this down, times 25 minus x squared. And the new exponent is 1 half minus 1. So that's minus 1 half. And now we take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, and that will be minus 2x so that's our expression for the derivative of the area with respect to the variable x and we want to set that equal to 0 and solve for x to get our critical points so let's see what this gives us we have 2 square root 25 minus x squared. This and this cancel. So you have minus x times 2x. That's minus 2x squared. This negative exponent, let's put this down here. Equals 0. So this is just this term. These cancel. Minus 2x squared. With that negative exponent, we'll just write this down here. Now we can multiply both sides of the equation by this. So this will just be 2 times 25 minus x squared minus 2x squared. equals 0. So again, that would just multiply on both sides of the equation by this denominator. Gives us this expression. So we're going to have 50 minus 4x squared, or that would be 25 minus 2x squared equals 
0. So x comes out to be equal to 5 divided by the square root of 2. Or we can rationalize if we want to like this. five times the square root of two divided by two. Actually it would be plus or minus that. Let's see what that means. So this is x. So if x can be five times the square root of two over two or minus 5 times the square root of 2 over 2. We'll just take the positive value. So x equals 5 times the square root of 2 over 2. And then to get y, of course, we just put this, substitute that for x. And when we do that, y also equals that same value. So we know then that these values of x and y are critical values for the area. That is, they represent either a maximum or a minimum. And to see which it is, we need to go ahead and take the second derivative of the area with respect to x, put this value for x in, and see whether we get a positive or a negative expression just as you saw us do in the previous video in example number one. And we have it worked out right here. This was dA dx as we just saw previously. Now we have to take the second derivative. So here we will have one half, two in the one half down. This would be 25 minus x squared to the minus one-half times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. That's minus 2x. Then we will have this times the derivative of this. That's minus 4x. And write this down in the denominator. Then we have minus this times this derivative. And this derivative is minus one-half 25 minus x squared minus 1 half minus 1 is minus 3 halves. And of course, take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. That's minus 2x. So let's see if this works out to. This is just 1. So we have minus 2x divided by the square root of 25 minus 4x squared. Here we have minus 4x over the square root of 25 minus x squared minus, now this is minus 1 half, that's minus 2, so that gives us plus x times minus 2x, it's minus 2x cubed, and then we have 25 minus x squared to the 3 halves power. And really, we don't have to go any further than this, because we can see that okay, we're going to put a positive value in for x, so here we're going to have then, it's going to be some, with a minus sign, there's some negative number, plus a negative number, plus another negative number, will give us some negative number. That's all we need to know, that when we put our, when we have this value for x, this comes out giving us our second derivative, which is this, will sum up to a negative number, therefore, we are guaranteed then that these values of x and y gives us a maximum area, not a minimum area. And that really solves the problem for us. Um, and again, it's a demonstration of how powerful um, the tools of calculus can be. But actually, we did not have to use this approach. We could have solved this problem just by using trigonometry, thinking of it like this. Here, we said that this was x squared 
plus y squared equals 25. So the radius is 5. So going from here to here, that's 5. So we see that x, and let's just call this angle here theta, we see that x equals 5 times the cosine of theta. y is 5 times the sine of theta. And the area is 2x the base, so that would be 10 times the cosine of theta. times the height, that's 5 times the sine of theta, so that's 50 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta, and 50, that's 25 times 2. And the reason we're trying to write it like that, before we had 50 times the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And hopefully when you see that, that reminds you, well, wait a minute now, isn't one of the basic trig identities that the sine of 2 theta that is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So 50 is 25 times 2, where this is the sine of 2 theta. So we have an expression then that the area equals 25 times the sine of 2 theta. And we want the area to be a maximum. Of course, the maximum value that this can have is for the sine of 2 theta to be equal to 1. So that means 2 theta has to equal pi over 2, or theta equals pi over 4. So we had from our diagram x is 5 times the cosine of theta. So x is 5 times the cosine of pi over 4. y equals 5 times the sine pi over 4, or that's 45 degrees, this is pi over 4 radians. The cosine of pi over 4, or the cosine of 45 degrees, is the same as the sine. It's 5 times the square root of 2 over 2. Of course, you get the same value for y. The sine of pi over 4, or the sine of 45 degrees, is the square root of 2 over 2, which is what we had before. So we use calculus to solve our problem, but we actually could have solved it just as quickly in this instance anyhow, just by using some basic trigonometry. Anyway, in the next video, we will have another um, problem like this. It would be a different nature, a maximum minimum type problem that involves a constraint equation. And that will be our last example of uh, these types of problems are the simpler ones. We can go ahead and solve the problem without having to use the grunge multipliers.